The European City Economic and Financial Governance Group uh, was uh, initiated in 2014 by the City Council of uh, Barcelona and our Institute, the European Institute of Public Administration here in Barcelona. And we created this group together with the cities of Hamburg, uh, Dublin, City of London, Milan and Vienna. Uh, representing a total of almost 30 million inhabitants in the metropolitan areas. In 2016, uh, the group has been expanded by three new cities. The new cities who joined the group was Amsterdam from the Netherlands, Bordeaux from France and the city of Vilnius. Currently, we are also in the process of uh, allowing, if there is interest, to join one or two new interested and qualified cities. The CFG is a high-level partnership of CEOs and CFOs and director of finance in the field of economic and financial governance. It is a timely initiative, uh, also technically supported as well as recognized by the European Commission, as it coincides with the efforts and the formulation of the ESA and the EPSAS uh, by the Commission to implement it across the European Union. Our mission is very clear. We would like to, or we do, uh, unite large European cities that are very well committed to quality management, liquidity and sustainability of public sector finances as a guarantor of Europe's economic competitiveness, its social policies and thus ultimately the well-being for the citizens. We have three objectives. The one is to advocate sound financial management, transparency and sustainability in public finance in cities, to contribute, of course, to European capacity building in this field, economic and financial field, at the city level, and, of course, also to maintain a strong link with and support to European policy development and formulation. With regard to the most challenging issues, uh, I mentioned them already once, is the financing of infrastructure. Every city is, let's say, uh, keen to improve its investment in project and infrastructure. We have uh, real uh, city plans, like in Amsterdam, where there's a, the space a big issue, and they have a strong, let's say, planning for infrastructure for growing of the city, even if the space don't allow it. The same of Bordeaux tries to anticipate new mobility infrastructure while expecting an increase in residents. Another issue is, of course, and we will come back also probably later on with your questions, transition to the EPSA, the European Public Sector Accounting Standards, which are designed, which are formulated at the European Commission level, what needs to be done in order to convert the city's financial department Fin uh, accounting department into the, the EPSAS. Last but not least, another issue is also important is group management. Maybe it does not sound immediately the bell, but a lot of cities have not only the government or the administration as such, a lot of they have subsidiarity, entities which belongs to the city, like Barcelona Active in the city of Barcelona, but of course it's a public entity or, or they have private companies, they have a, pub, a public participation. In the example of, for example, of the city of Hamburg, they have 400 of such uh, public and private companies. It is a big challenge to manage them, to make a budgetary planning as a city who is responsible also for the entities, the different accounting systems, the different legal forms, and how to optimize such group management. It's one of the big issues. Yeah, the standardized financial report, we are very proud that this has been produced because it's a joint developed template. Of course, it is in line with, or it also in reference to other, uh, let's say, official frameworks like the European System of Accounts, the International Public Sector Accounting Standard, the IPSAS, or the International Monetary Fund. But we have we set down the cities participating in the group and defined together a number of uh, key performance indicators on financial health, as well as a number of uh, financial indicators based on accrual accounting. As I mentioned before, not all cities they have fully fledged accrual accounting system in place. But nonetheless, we achieved that each that these uh, joint financial reports have been calculated and developed, uh, let's say, uh, considering 
uh, accrual accounting. In that case, we have indicators such as statement of oper operating performances, we have capital operations, we have cash statements, we have a lot of debt. We have also KPIs. Again, I can explain some of them, like financial autonomy, I mentioned it before, net lending or borrowing capacity, we have operating balance, it's the balance between current resources and structural expenditures. We have a lot of the KPIs in relation to debt, debt repayment capacity, debt repayment length. What does this mean? How long does it take to pay, repay the stock of debt a city has uh, on, the level, on the current level of repayment? Then we have the amount of commercial debts. Very important indicator in the sense of does the city demonstrate any difficulties in paying back the debt? Yeah, you can easily loan, you can easily get the money, but how long does it take? Can you have, you have the capacity on the current income and on the current revenue uh, in place on a yearly basis to pay, uh, let's say, these kind of debts back? So these are, uh, let's say, the financial reports, which are not only measured in one year of reference, in 2013 or 2014, but what is more, more interesting to have it over a period of years. Harmonized systems would be crucial for reaching a needed transparency. This is one of our philosophy, endurance, and of course also lower cost of capital. When we look at harmonized system and the EPSAS as an accrual accounting system, it may help both the CFOs, it may help uh, the policymakers, it may help the public sector auditors in several, let's say, uh, issues. It has an advantage in comparing fiscal transparency fiscal uh, uh, stability, it has an advantage in improving tax collection, it has an advantage in improving accountability and also for the decision maker. It also contributes for better management of public finances in general. Why? Because we have the full information available on revenues, expenses, assets, liabilities, etc. And of course it also uh, shows the economic value that policies which are implemented at the city level render to their citizens. Probably the answer is yes. Uh, at least a minimum of very general common guidelines which can be, be further specified or put in line with national standards is very much desirable. Common professional guidance practice concerning public accounting at the EU level are desirable, but only in the case if they are designed, originate from a bottom-up way. Also, so consider uh, that how are the country's administrative tradition, as I mentioned it before, in order to harmonize it instead of a top-down standardization uh, approach, where it means one entity takes the initiative, takes the decision, and then everybody has to, let's say, implement. Harmonization is very much, uh, let's say, um, favored also in our city uh, governments, in our group, but there must be, let's say, a two-way, not only top-down, but also bottom-up. It depends a bit on the topics. If we look at uh, uh, the topic of budgeting, uh, a lot is uh, being done now in order to make the budget the financial figures very comprehensively and well visualized available, open data. On the other hand, of course, what is uh, uh, available is not often understand or understood, let's say, from the different users. From that point of view, it is very important to have, let's say, both what you produce can be then read. That's very clear in all our city governments who have produced and published a lot of data, but it has not often been accessed or in addition, understood. Another issue is, of course, uh, what we learned clearly, financing infrastructure, as I mentioned before. PPP, Public Private Partnership, is a, a clear instrument which facilitates uh, the financing, also in the long term, to create a win-win situation between the public and the private sector. In this case, what we found out is that a lot of city governments, they do not have the full or professional knowledge about PPPs and in financing infrastructure. So if there is uh, the decision to use PPP more often, in-depth training and staff needs to be, let's say, uh, trained. It's very important. In the sense of budgeting also, uh, performance-related budgeting came out of one of the most used, very well 
uh, applied as well as very well appreciated way of budgeting. We also have participatory budgeting, we have phenomenon-based budgeting, uh, activity-based budgeting, performance-related uh, budgeting. We can see a lot of our cities are uh, including. In addition, also budgeting, it would be good to have, like in London, and in other cities to have it on a multi-annual basis, not only yearly budgets. So there should be a projection what should, uh, will be our budget for the next four or five years, which in many cities is not yet in place. Finally, with regards to EPSAS, one thing is who are making the accounts, so the accounting makers. On the other end, what I said also before, in the same case with the budget, is who are the accounting users. So whether we are speaking about the politicians, whether we speak about the citizens, financial in, uh, institutions, it is very important to explain very well what are you going to produce for those who are going to use it. So what is maybe, a, um, let's say, a solution for overcoming these barriers, as you asked, literacy. Education. It means you have to make citizens, but not only citizens, but also politicians, uh, more aware, more educated, more trained what these financial figures mean. I will never forget the Vice Mayor of Amsterdam, when we had the meeting in, uh, in Amsterdam, he said CFOs or financial directors often work in isolation, in, in let's say, in uh, ivory towers. But it's clear because they produce extremely important information, but it's not, uh, let's say, understandable from the others. So what is very important is now we have to find a common language in a, in a framework that so everybody can has uh, a clear access, assess also this reliable uh, information, financial health or whatever, uh, in a way it is uh, very unbundled. That means in a way that is easily to uh, be understand. We have now in our topics, one meeting should dedicate in order to better define such uh, financial indicators or financial information for non-financial readers, as I said before, citizens or politicians, in order to make this uh, issue, as you say, when you uh, do the preparation of the budget, that you can also involve. But very often if you involve the citizens, they don't know about the different process or what they can contribute. At the end of the day, it doesn't even make sense to include them. But this very budgeting, if it's a very uh, concrete example, if you say, I would like to have a new kindergarten in my district, uh, and for that reason, we may, uh, let's say, reserve money or not. Everybody can participate because this has to do. If you say, shall we increase um, VAT or property tax, or shall we reduce it? Of course, everybody would say reduce it, but on the same times, that would mean then maybe we cannot pay social service for it. So it's very difficult issue. So this literacy, this education aspect may overcome these barriers. What we find out also in most of the cities is it is not accessed very often by the normal citizens. If you have some, let's say, lobby group or some representative group who pick out the one or other costs, or maybe a company who participated in the public procurement process and another company has done maybe received a contract, then they check that and maybe then they will do something with it. But generally speaking, it is rarely, let's say, uh, consulted. For example, I mean, we have, I don't say the name of the city, the most accessible uh, information, financial information of uh, a city was simply the salary of the mayor. So you can see so much information is there and what the citizens who wherever access is looking at the end of the day. So it is, yes, it is a trend, it will stay, but it has of course uh, the weight against the cost and the benefits needs to be very carefully considered by each of the city governments.